Okay, my name is Marcus Ambrust and I talk about Q, QDEF today, where we stand and where we need to go. First, what is QDEF? It's QMU's device model abstraction. What does that mean? Well, we've got a tree of devices connected by buses. We have device independent configuration and control and devices implement a bus specific API. So that's a stupid slide because you can't see anything behind these words, so we go through them one after the other. This is a fragment of a QDEF device tree. You see a device that provides a bus, and off the bus you can hang more devices, which may provide more buses and still more devices. That's pretty straightforward. The whole thing forms a tree, the device tree. The device independent configuration control, you create a device at a certain place in the tree. You set properties, stuff like, say you create a disk device, you set its serial number, you set up its connection to a backend, and then you tell it, go forth and emulate. And all that above the dashed line together is in a monitor command device add or equivalently in a command line option dash device, which Anthony mentioned. Likewise, we got stuff to destroy, unplug it, free it, and so forth. The bus specific API, so you're not supposed to actually read this, it's just an illustration. We got a bus and define a set of methods in a suitable way and they cover initialization, destruction and even operation. In this case, we can initialize a SCSI device, destroy it, talk to it, send data, receive data, stuff like that. So, QDEF is a success. It does lots of neat things like we got approximately 250 devices converted to QDEF in the tree. No, that's just a number. What does it mean? How many devices do we have? Well, I don't know. It's pretty easy to find a QDEF device in the tree. You're just using rep. But the old devices that haven't been QDEFified, they're just a ball of code somewhere. And if you don't know them, you can't find them. We have one way to configure them, dash device. One way to hot plug them, device add. One way to hot unplug them, device tell. And <clears throat> this one way to do things immediately gives us the, a way to do a configuration file, which we can read with dash read config. And the whole thing is discoverable, so QMU can tell you what devices are on the menu and what properties you can set. Sounds good, huh? <laughs> so we can break out the bubble and go home. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, the beverage we've earned so far is more like this. Oh. Oh. Well, it's decent vinegar, at least. <laughs> <laughs> there are missing things. Well, that's natural. We are just not done yet. But there are so stupid things and difficult things. And let me talk about them in order. QDF is incomplete. There are lots of devices that haven't been QDFified. I showed you a bus inter uh, <coughs> the, the interface the device implements for a, the bus specific interface there. Well, some of them are well developed like the one I showed, but others are anemic. You can just initialize the thing, but once you operated it, there's no abstraction anymore. You just do it however you see fit. We need other stuff real quick, just better IRQ and GPIO bind binding. We pretend that can only happen in one special kind of bus, and even there we get it wrong. So the end result is that about half of our devices use that kind of special bus, even though they probably shouldn't. The de default device tree we create, we have means to override that so that the user can say, no, I don't want this. I want to configure this a bit differently. How that actually works on the hood is weird. We need, and even more, dot, dot, dot. 
So let's move on to the stupid things. I love this guy. He's so earnest. Documentation? <laughs> yeah. In a way, QDEF was a flashback to the bad old times. It just got committed without any documentation whatsoever, or guidance, what it's supposed to do and how it's supposed to be used. So that, of course, led to people just figure it out by themselves and add stuff to it, and which brought us into more messes. It shouldn't be that hard to name a node in a tree. I mean, I mean path names, you use them every day. Still, we screw it up. They are unusable. We have many hacks in place, and these are not the fault of the people who committed them. There's just no infrastructure to do it right. So people did it in hacky ways, and they break dash device. So the whole wonderful news I gave you about configuration files and device-independent control, well, it's nice when it works. There's no taste in naming. Three things, PSI, PCI state, ICI device, I2C slave. Same thing, different buses. You wouldn't know. You have to look them up and see what they do. Unsurprisingly, no taste in semantics either. Three different buses again, create. All of them take a driver name argument. One of them bots a program if the driver doesn't exist. Another one does initialization in, in addition to creation. And I'll be hanged if I remember which one that does which. <laughs> so that completes the part where I amuse you by beating up the QDEF developers, which include me, and brings me to the interesting stuff. QDEF is hard. Remember the slide with the device tree? Well, that's how we connect devices. And because it's a tree, a node has just one parent. And that's OK for plugging into a real bus. Like here, we have an ETH 1000 device, and it goes into a PCI bus. But there are other devices. I couldn't be bothered to actually look one up, so I invented one. Say we have some frog controller, and it needs to <coughs> signal an interrupt and talk to some DMA controller for help with DMA and expose a couple of registers on some so chip select address, <coughs> address lines, data lines, stuff like that. So actually, we want to talk to many devices. And there's no real identifiable bus in the normal sense we would use. And one parent just doesn't work here. And that's one of the places where we did, did the, the, the weird hacks, and one of the places where Dash device cannot work in, the current, in its current form. It's also not OK for plugging many times. This is a super I.O. chip. It is an ICR <coughs> device. And depending on its configuration, it contains more ISA devices, and they all want to go on the one single ISA bus. Many plugs, just one socket. Where to go? Which brings me to device composition. Previous slide there, on the left, there is a UART. It sits within the super I.O. chip. A UART can be a standalone device on an ISA bus or a component of a super I.O. chip and can probably go on any number of other, other buses as well. How many UARTs do we have in the tree? We have, it's at least six. It's at least six. We need a way to compose devices from components. And QDEF, the only tool for composition QDEF offers right now is the bus. And that's not a good tool for that. So, what can we do about it? Obviously, a tree is an oversimplification. 
so we need to get rid of that. Buses are very useful, but not everything's a bus. So the idea to have always a bus between two devices needs to go up. Instead, we, we need to generalize. Devices have plugs, sockets, sometimes one, sometimes many. And that leads us to the directed graph. And Anthony mentioned that idea already in a different context. And all that without <coughs> losing the, the end goal. Keep that in, in, in our sights. The configuration, we need to configure, describe the configuration as data so we can reason over it and <coughs> expose it to management tools that can do something with it. Right now, so much of our configuration is actually blobs of code. It's harder than it looks at first sight. Well, what could be hard in a configuration file describing a machine? Now that's a default machine. And what the user actually does by specifying options and stuff like that, it's edit that file. And some of the devices are composed. And how do we describe the composition? Is that code? Is that data again? Is it in a file? Is it in a configuration file? We don't know. We'll figure it out. Well, this, some, <coughs> the conclusion of this talk is, no, that's the state of QDEF. <laughs> it's a promising invention, but it's not quite fit for a tour around the world, <coughs> around the world right now. Questions? <coughs>